Hello friends, my name is Christy Rice and we are live again today. I'm so glad to see you here. Good morning, good morning, good evening for some of you. So today we are going to be focusing on leaves and greens and ferns and all the things. And a couple of things are gonna happen today. I'm gonna be doing a paint along on some ornaments. Yes, if you are team replay, this was originally live right before the holiday season. And so in the spirit of the season, I'll be painting on ornaments and those ornaments will be made available for sale on christyrice.com. I also am probably, hopefully if I have time, going to be getting to some finishing. How do you finish your artwork? How do we wrap up a painting that we are really in love with and that we're hopeful that we will remain in love with? How do we keep that painting going and then finish it? It's something that isn't talked about enough in the watercolor world, and uh, I want to talk about it more. And so I'm going to take you on a journey of completing uh, hopefully at least one painting today. And then today is the first day that my studio sale begins. And what is the studio sale? Once a year, I release pieces that I've been working on throughout the year, either from my YouTube tutorials here or on TikTok, Instagram. They're the pieces that I start, that I start, that I start and then stop and never finish. And so once a year I finish them and make them available to you. It's a great opportunity. If you've ever wanted to own original art, if you've ever wanted to own one of my pieces, they're made um, available very, very uh, accessibly priced. So friends, let's get into it though. Let's get down to the painting table and start to do some work on these ornaments. All right, friends. So I have my ornaments here. I'm not sure how many I will get to today, um, but this, these are the Bisqueware ornaments. There's been a lot of questions. I'm just gonna address it now. The Bisqueware, uh, we ourselves are on a journey to figure out a new supplier because our original supplier um, from over the years uh, is no longer making them. Some people are saying Michael's uh, has them available. So it's something to check out. Today, we're going to do some leaves and greens. I don't really know. I'm just going to kind of roll with my instincts today, see where they take me. I've got some green. I've sprayed down this palette. I've got some green and whatnot that I was using um, over the weekend, and I'm just going to run with it. The last batch of ornaments that I painted, um, kind of we're soaking in the color a lot differently and so we'll see how how these are today um yeah these are not as not as crazy soaking in which is nice um but i am going to get some gesso i am using gesso so these ornaments are truly mixed media um because of the gesso and i'm just going to start doing this press drag and lift technique press drag and lift and I'm using my quarter inch dagger. And as I go towards the bottom of this, what's becoming a spray of leaves, I'm making the strokes larger. And I think I'm probably gonna go right off, yep, right off the ornament, and that's nice. And then come down. Now, if you are bringing in uh, mixed media, any kind of acrylic, remember friends, to keep that acrylic off of your watercolor palette. I'm rinsing my brush off camera here before I go back into my palette. Very mindful not to contaminate. If you have an oopsie and you do get some of that color over on your palette, is it the absolute end of the world? No, but you wanna remove it from the palette as quickly as you can um, so that it doesn't dry and you can kind of get it off of that surface because it will impact the way that your watercolor pans release pigment um, and it will also in, impact your mixing surface. Friends, make sure that you are asking questions. This is also a live uh, Q&A. Uh, we have Kelly with us today behind the scenes. She is managing all of your questions and answering questions that she can in comments. So um, just keep those questions coming. If I don't get to it right away, Kelly will. Uh, just making sure y'all can hear me. Can you hear me? Making sure you can hear me. I'm sure somebody would have said by now, I can't hear nothing. But um, gesso is, it's a polymer base. So basically an acrylic. Um, it's traditionally used to prime canvas or prime surfaces for painting. Um, 
I define it when folks ask me that question, it's, it's basically like a watery, a watered down acrylic. Um, there are some additional, um, it basically uh, allows your painting surface to pick up more tooth, more texture. So um, there is some texture, some, it's not, it's not an obvious texture though. Um, <clears throat> but it really feels like acrylic when you're painting with it. And then it also very much has the same finish of acrylic when dry. And so I'm just going in here. I didn't like those lines that I added and I'm smoothing them out. Lovely. Just a simple little spray. I actually really love the simplicity of that. I'm trying to think of what I want to do here. Rinsing my brush though, because I do want to go back to, uh, Jess says, Christy, can you show some of your art growing up? <coughs> I could, that, I should do that. That would be a really fun, um, a fun video coming up. That's a great idea. Painting on this, what would you seal it with afterwards? Gesso again? Um, no, we seal it with a final fixative, um, like a matte finish, final fixative, like you would seal your artwork with. Um, and we have tried so many things and that has proven to be a lovely and um, permanent, reliable option. So that's that. And just a little bit more press, drag and lift. Yeah, the color is really carrying again. I don't know how this particular batch of ornaments was finished, but the color is really bleeding on these when I just go in with straight watercolor. So I'm having to bring, I, I mean, I always bring in gesso when I'm painting ornaments. I like the look of it. I like the detail I can get with it. But this time, this particular batch, woof, it just, it's a necessity. <laughs> you make it look so easy. Oh, thank you. Well, I understand that. Um, Krylon varnish. It's a spray can. Okay. So yes, thank you. I was, Kelly, I appreciate you letting them know the exact um, material that we're using. I knew it was like a fixative, um, but Krylon varnish. There you go, friends. Krylon varnish. Look at that color. Just bleeding like it's its job. Good night. All right. I'm going to put this one off to the side, let her dry, and start another. Um, gesso is thinner. Gesso also has, um, it, it's not something you can feel, but it has, it gives the paper more tooth or the canvas more tooth, more texture. Um, you really can't feel the texture, um, but you, you, it, how do I describe this? Um, there is more abrasive material in the gesso. So that's why it's used as a primer to kind of help your paint attach. Um, but I don't find that I notice it when I'm painting with it or when it's dry. It's not something you can actually feel um, in the paint or when you rub your hand over the dry or the dry paint. So I use gesso because I love that. I love its texture. It's like a ready-made, beautiful texture or um, the viscosity of it as I'm painting with it. It's perfectly watered down. Could you put a layer of clear gesso first? You know, I guess you could. I've never used clear gesso. You're not the first person to ask me about clear gesso during this painting process um, in other lives. And friends, if you are Team Replay, I'm going to go ahead and have all of the lives in this series down below in the description if you want to get caught up or follow along or whatever the case may be. They're all going to be down there for you. Let's do some eucalyptus. Just some round-ish shapes. Got to get that white in there or else this is just going to bleed like mad. All right. I'm going to keep going, get a little bit larger as we go. I'm using just the tip of my dagger here. Make this one a little bit bigger. Little tips on the end. Look at how that moisture just worked its way out. Goodness, I know about tooth, but why are you using it now? 
um, I'm, I'm just, I like mixed media and I'm paint, when I paint on these ornaments, I often use it to help the watercolor stay a little bit more controlled. Um, as I was mentioning just a few moments ago, when I just apply watercolor, see how it bleeds out and it's very much out of control, which I don't like. <laughs> so, um, I put in a little bit of gesso or acrylic. Uh, whatever you've got, use it, and it um, gives me that control while still allowing me to maintain a watercolory finish in areas. Yeah. Here we go. Keep those questions coming, friends. If you had to choose three watercolors other than primary or mixing colors, what would you choose? Um, oh yeah, that's um, any kind of peach, like a, a convenience peachy color like I have in my palette. Um, uh, some type of ivory, they're all gonna be more opaque. Um, so like uh, I have an ivory in my Art for Joy's Sake palette. This ivory is actually inspired by um, Daniel Smith's buff titanium. So that would be another choice. Um, and then opera rose, any kind of opera rose, bright fluorescent, rosy pinky color would be my choice. I am adding some peach to my eucalyptus here, brushing it on almost like a dry brush. So it doesn't really mix. I don't want it to mix a lot with the layers underneath. And then I'm gonna actually go in now. Everything's damp, so I can actually blend and remove some of the color here if I want. And this is a lovely way to get back some of your watercolory textures. I'm gonna keep a um, paper towel here handy and start removing some of this color and see what is left behind. It's a great way to blend. So lifting, this is a lifting technique. You lay down a bit of moisture and then pull some of the color back up. It's not just a means of correcting mistakes, it's a means of um, adding texture and dimension. When you lift to kind of see what's left over, what remains can be really revealing, really interesting. And then I'm going back in and see, I've kind of brought that watercoloriness back to that area. A little bit more water on this brush. And there we go. Look at that. Push that back, push it back. Lovely. And we can do some of that. I like this blue. Look at that. Look at, see how that's traveling? And they don't all do this to me, but sometimes you get a batch, it's finished a little different. You know, clay is an organic material, so you get what you get sometimes, and you can't get upset. It's wild, though. I had to make that larger to kind of recover all of that bleeding that was happening. Holy moly. can't believe that. All right. I'm going to go in, mixing in a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue from my Art for Joy's Sake palette. I'm going to have all of the materials, friends, listed below. So you have them and here we go. These are the marks that really define, I have found um, eucalyptus, um, the look of eucalyptus, those like center little veins, so to speak, right? I'll put some down here and then we'll see what I'm gonna do with them. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet. Maybe just some fine Oh yeah, I have an idea. See, I'm talking myself through. When you are painting, I don't care if you're painting on ornaments or not, because all of this honestly applies to watercolor paper too. Everything that I'm showing you today applies. Um, talk yourself through. Great question. Keep that up from Dora. Um, I will get to that. Um, talk yourself through. If you're struggling, if you're questioning, sometimes it can be so helpful, I have found, to just verbally um talk yourself through an issue through a question and um yeah it's very comforting i am using my art for joy sake palette 
today and I, I've honestly been using it um, so much over the last two years. So this is my own palette of my own design. Um, it's a custom collector's tin. It's a traditional travel palette format. Um, this one obviously well used, well loved. This pops out for more mixing space. Um, and there are 12 colors and I'm going to talk about those colors. This is the one I'm using here. There are 12 colors. They are not your traditional colors. They are highly curated, very, some say odd, um, but I have found them to be incredibly, um, uh, I spent a year developing this palette and choosing the pigment combinations. They are proprietary pigment combinations. Um, and it has been such a joy. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and do a split screen here. I'm going to show you um, the mixing chart from this palette and what you're able to make. And it's incredible. I designed this primarily for beginners in a sense that I wanted beginners not to just be exposed to the classic mixing colors, your primaries, which is so often what beginners get into. But also this is designed for those who have been painting for a while and just need something new and fun and exciting and, and a, maybe a little challenge. So this palette was designed to give beginners that zing, that wow factor, that, oh my gosh, look what watercolor can do in terms of more interesting, more convenience-like colors. And then a lot of these colors, um, I would say about a good, um, third of the palette, the colors are more opaque, um, more not, not, not gouache like, um, but I've really tried to, um, draw your attention to the, the different personalities of watercolor with this particular palette. And they are available on Amazon. I'm going to go ahead back to full screen here. And, um, Kelly put that QR code up and you can take a look at that. Um, you can just hover your camera app right over that. Um, sorry, I know some people are like, yeah, I know how to do QR code. And they're probably like, why are you explaining it? And some folks um, have not. So I always explain it. So forgive me. So anywho, um, that is the palette I'm using. And that is a little bit about it. So thanks for asking. All right. I am using my cat's tongue brush from the Art for Joystick brush collection of my own design. If you're new here, I design art supplies. And so I am using the side of this brush, the very side, and I'm just doing a press and lift, press and lift, changing the angle of my brush as I go. And I'm going to get some peach on here, just a skosh and continue press and lift. Oh, too much water. It's bleeding. Got to be careful. Got to remember here. I'm actually going to go ahead and make this a very soft little hint of a eucalyptus leaf in the background there. Lovely. I always say where there is an oopsie or an accident in your painting, there's always, always a solution, friends. Always. Um... I've always wanted to make my watercolor paints in NYC. Yeah. Oh, I love Kramer. Yes. I love Kramer. I stumbled onto that shop. I was in town for bridal fashion week. I have a business, a wedding, uh, a wedding invitation design business. And I was in town and, um, I was where Kramer was on the street. And I, I walked by and I was like, I did a double take. I'm like, Oh, what the heck is that? What is that? Cause you know, it just looked like pigments in the window. And I, I went in and I didn't come out for like two and a half hours. And that was, I actually bought a bunch of, of raw pigments that day and started making my own. And, um, it's when I really got geeked out about color. So, um, Jess says, I love when you sing, um, Oh, <laughs> I don't remember singing You Are My Sunshine. I don't, but I'm sure I did because I sing all the time. Um, anywho, oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I do sing that to my daughter. I sing, I, I sing a lot for my kiddos. Um, I'm gonna go in um, 
I also sing, uh, my daughter was in the NICU uh, when she was first born for two weeks. And it was right around Christmas time. Actually, we were so nervous we weren't going to get home for Christmas. She was, um, my daughter is adopted. My son is adopted. Anywho, we were so nervous that we weren't going to make it home for Christmas. And I remember just trying to like sit in that reality and that discomfort. And I started seeing her, oh, come all ye faithful. And now like she actually has a sign up on her, um, her nursery wall um, year round. Uh, a, it's like a decorative Christmas sign and it says, Oh, come on, you faithful. And I sing that to her all year round. It's crazy. All right. I'm going in with my flat wash brush, just adding some strokes like this, just a press, small drag and a lift. I'm actually going to do that here. I like this like square kind of effect that I'm getting and the color and the texture that's happening. So I'm going to go with it and let's see what we can turn it into. This is fun. All right. I used to live just around the corner. Yeah. The prices are off the hook. Yeah. <laughs> Kramer Pig. Uh, my son is six. He's going to be seven um, December 4th. My daughter is two and she's going to be three. Um, well, I guess it would be, it's the 27th. So it's like, is that next Monday? <laughs> I forget she's, or is that Sunday? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, she's literally almost three. There we go. Yes, that is the address for Kramer Pigments. Sunday. <laughs> Thanks, Kel. <laughs> okay, I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Like I, I, like I look at my calendar just because I have to sometimes. It's just like, I don't know. I just float around life, not never knowing what day it is, apparently. And Kelly keeps me in check. I'm going into this olive, this beautiful medium, more bluey olive on my palette. And I'm going to start to add some linear detail. Oh, I need a little more pigment on there. Oh yeah, this is fun. A little abstract situation going on here. We'll see where it takes us. All right. My dogs are barking in the background. I have to apologize, but this is live, y'all. There's nothing I can do about it. If you are team replay, we'd love to hear. Go ahead and head into comments. Let us know that you were here, team replay. We love you. And we, uh, I want to hear from you. I want to hear your comments and questions. And um, I go in and check them out every so often and reply. All right, I am following the curvature of the widest point of these little abstract marks that I made. And um, yeah, enjoying this, love the botanicals. Good, yay. Um, I have not tried Roman's, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Is it Smalls uh, watercolor? Um, and I have, I do have an A Gallo palette. I picked up that palette, um, I think in 2020, I actually picked it up and it's just lovely. I keep wanting to add to it. Um, I actually have a video planned for next year where I'm gonna be um, reviewing some more handmade watercolor brands that I've collected over the years. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I'm just changing up my color, a little more blue on the brush. And this is a little more dry brush right now. Lovely. Love that. A little more blue. And I'm going to get a little bit of brown in here. I am using the liner brush from my Art for Joy Sake brush collection. Good place for watercolor paper in NYC. Anybody got an answer for that? Anybody? Anybody? I don't have a particular place in mind. Um, but... And I don't know if Kramer, the last time I was in there, I don't think they necessarily had watercolor paper. If they did, it was just like little, you know, not huge selection, I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right. I am just moving around this and following the contour. See how I'm starting that line at the center and then curling it down and around the silhouette here of the leaf as I get to the bottom. And then I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. 
when I go on the other side, I don't have to, you know, you don't have to go as close together and that keeps the leaf really interesting. I'm even going to go in behind here and sketch in some moments like this. That's fun. I better look up and see if there's a question. All right. Hi from Belgium. I'm late to the party. Did you use watercolor ground? No, I do. I do not prep these ornaments. Um, and that makes things a little wild because, um, the paint does bleed a little bit. The watercolor bleeds, but I do use these essentially are mixed media pieces because I'm using gesso to help me kind of control the flow of the watercolor. So basically any kind of acrylic, um, but I really like painting on the raw surface. I really do. All right, I'm going to go up here and strengthen because this is kind of the top here. I'm going to strengthen that little to, that area to kind of look like a branch. I'm going in with that dark blue and brown mixture and strengthening this up here to look like a, a mean branch. And I'm just kind of using little squiggly marks like that. Hello, hello. Just ordered one of your books. Will be delivered tomorrow. Very cool. Which one did you order? Oh, Cheap Joe's. Is there an actual Cheap Joe's in the city? Or are the are you just saying online? Because of course, online, yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if there were actual like Cheap Joe's. Friends, I'm also um, going to take some time today and talk about actually finishing pieces, like actual artwork on paper. Um, on Saturday, I did a really cool live about how to finish your artwork. And I finished these two pieces. Um, once a year, I release my artwork for sale that I've been painting throughout the year. And these two pieces are going to go live today. This is a 9 by 13. There's still a little bit of work to be done on her. This one is done. This is from, this was inspired by the movie Emma and it was a YouTube tutorial. Um, really excited about these becoming available today. And this one's also going to become available today also from a YouTube tutorial on composition. So super fun opportunity to get or gift um, some original artwork. All right, I'm going to go in here. I keep using that dark blue. She's kind of my crutch for detail. So I need to like, I need to challenge myself. So I'm mixing some peach into this green I had over here. I love my peach from this palette so much to make this kind of like creamy, sagey green. Um, I don't actually think I want to use that on there. I'm going to go over to this eucalyptus and start adding in some more. Oh, look at that just crazy, crazy, crazy amount of bleeding I'm getting on these pat on these ornaments. Just wild. And I'm going to sketch in some linear, just simple leafy shapes, really light in the background, really light, some stems. Yeah, that's fun. A little bit bigger as it goes towards the bottom. And then adding in some stems. Nice. Nice. Lots of fun texture. I wasn't sure. I'm never sure when I paint. I've been painting these ornaments for, this will be the fourth year, I think. Third or fourth year. And I mean, I've been painting them myself for what feels like forever for gifts and whatnot. But I started doing it live during the holiday season. And, um... I never know exactly what I'm going to do when I start. I may have a type of flower in mind or whatnot, but I never know exactly where I'm going to land. Um, no, the palette, my Art for Joy's Sake palette, this one, um, it's like a click-in system. Um, I can't get this tray out right now for whatever. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, these, little, these little things bend back, and then they pop out like this, and then you bend them back. A little tighter and you pop your um, half pan in. Let me see if I can actually get it to do this. So this one's really wet. I'm getting all painted. Listen for this. Clicks in. And then it's like, it, it, yeah, not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. 
I love, this can be a fun thing too, you know, for artwork in general, not necessarily um, ornaments, but have a couple paintings going literally at the same time in the same session. Hello, Color with Claire. Um, and, and, you know, just kind of work back and forth on them and see how that feels and see what you learn from that kind of arrangement, so to speak. It can be really telling to paint in that way. All right, I am going to go in and do a background on this one. And I'm just going in with that deep blue to start and then just carry out whatever is on my brush throughout the rest of the composition. I love doing backgrounds like this. This, I get the question a lot, like, Christy, how do you do backgrounds? How does that work? And this is a technique I go to all the time, just filling in the negative space. So fun, very relaxing, kind of once you get the feel of it and get that comfort level with how it, how it works and how to cut in using the very tip of my brush, speaking of cutting in, to kind of work around the existing shapes in the negative areas. Negative space is basically the space that doesn't have the main image on it, so the background. And then just working my way down, grabbing some blue from my palette and working my way round and round. I better look up. Would you make your beautiful palettes available also as an empty format? Yes. Yeah, so. Um, I have another palette. Um, it was actually a palette that holds 24 um, pans. And I was actually going back and forth between offering a 24 palette originally and a 12. I ultimately decided on 12. But that palette is a different pattern. And I am looking into releasing that as an empty option um, in 2023. So, yeah. Hopefully coming soon. I actually have a lot of fun stuff coming soon. Some of it was supposed to already be here, but because of certain situations, um, it didn't happen. Um, actually, maybe I'll show you a couple of the things that are coming because we're live. And you know what? Fun, cool, crazy stuff happens when we're live. Do y'all want to see some of the stuff coming up? I need that area to dry anyway. All right. I'm literally opening a package, like, hi, DHL. I'm like gonna open it live. Y'all ready for this? Ready for this? Kelly, we might go late. Just so you know, we might go late. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So I um, have been designing a bunch of new stuff. Um, namely, one was a, a new brush set which is supposed to already be here and already be available for holiday fun. And it's not. So the new brush set, let me see if I can show you. It's going to be a number 12 round. These are my terribly unattractive samples. It's going to be a number six cat's tongue. It's going to be an eighth, quarter, uh, eighth inch dagger. Um, it's going to be, I think this was a number... Oh gosh, I think this is also number six, Filbert. And then I don't have the last brush here, but it's a teeny tiny, um, teeny tiny little detail brush, like a, like a, a zero, zero, three or something. It's crazy tiny, it's crazy tiny. Um, and then was there one more? I forget. Oh my gosh, I don't have my sample set together. Anywho, that's going to be the new brush set. It's called the uh, free, uh, Freedom from Fear brush collection. That's coming soon. And um, it's gonna come in a pouch, just like the Art for Joy Sake set. And then my travel brush, it's a number six round. I've been using this one for a while. It comes to the most incredible point and then it collapses for travel. And of course it's rose gold, rose gold. It's called the Joy Chaser brush. And this is gonna come in a sweet little felt pouch for travel. Love that, love that so much. This, sorry for all the noise, but you know, live unboxing. This, friends, is something crazy. Maybe you can help me choose. This is my collapsible, travel-friendly painter's pot. 
And these are the final colors I'm choosing from. I wanted to go with something neutral. Um, this is what it was designed after. All right, two wells, but I wanted something travel friendly and honestly, a more affordable option because the ceramic one's not travel friendly and the ceramic one's also not terribly, um, you know, they're, they're not cheap. So I wanted something more affordable. Ooh, you can't even tell. Can't even tell that that's a different color. Well, that's definitely not. Anyhow, all right. So um, a cat's tongue comes to a point. Great question. And the filbert is round. Actually, you might be able to see it better against that. There we go. Cat's tongue meets at a point in the center with a nice wide belly. And then the filbert is, it tapers, right? But it's rounded. Lovely for making floral. Anywho, this is my painter's pot. It's going to have a cute little um, uh, keychain with one of my flower designs on it hanging from it with a carabiner. So you can clip it onto like a backpack or like wherever. It's just going to be a cute little thing that will make sure that you can clip it on to something super easily. And it has two heights. Uh oh, do we lose? Okay, it's got two heights, so it can open to this height, and then it can go one more, even taller. Uh, we tested it for stability. It takes a lot to like literally. You'd have to almost tip a table over for it to um, fall down. <laughs> Very fine brushes that stay firm and don't turn to mush. Yes, I love detail brushes as well, and that is my hope with mine. Um, that has been my experience with mine. Um, they do stay very firm and springy. And so um, hopefully you will enjoy them eventually. So anyway, that is that is the 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 travel painter's pot. Um, it is finished with a um, it's kind of buffed so that it can't thank you. Um, it won't stain and, um, which is great. And yeah, you can toss it in the dishwasher. I don't know why I'm having trouble with this one. This is why we get samples friends, because we, you know, we got to test things out. Um, but I'm deciding between these two colors, this pretty, they're both kind of an ivory swirl. And then this one is kind of more muted ivory swirl. And I think I actually really like this one. Would you agree? This one, left, right. They're very similar, but I think I like left. Yes, makeup, but actually, if you like firmness, makeup brushes may not be firm enough for you. I tested out, um, this one is actually one that I tested out. This is a makeup brush, uh, kind of combination of bristles, and it was too soft for me. So we didn't go that direction. Anywho, so this is another one of the things that I've been designing, friends. Um, I also have a set of watercolor markers that I'm designing and uh, um, a journal. A journal is coming too. I'll show it to you. Why not? We're here. This is a journal I've been working on with three different types of watercolor paper included. Um, it's got a fun little... Yeah, some painting uh, suggestions and tips and then perforated watercolor. So it's got a hot press, um, a cold press and a, um, a very um, rough texture watercolor paper. So we're still working on her. She, she needs some left agree. Yeah. Okay, good. She needs some work, but rose gold foil detailing and the rose gold binding. And I'm super excited about it. A little letter from me. I think what we're actually working on is some tutorials that are exclusive to this purchase. Like if you were to purchase this, there'd be QR codes for a couple of tutorials that only you would get. So we're thinking about adding that. Anywho. All right. Thank you for letting me do a little impromptu, whatever that was. Yes, Dora, one of my, my next brush set coming out is going to be very tiny. There's going to be one brush in there. It's very tiny. And my current set does have the tiny liner brush. So that's, I think, what I was referring to. All right. So I want to go in. I'm actually going to use this 
this cat's tongue, a little peach on my brush. I love peach and green together. I think it is such a lovely combo. And I'm going to go ahead and put some of that into these little sketched leaves that I added. So pretty. You know, my dogs didn't bark the entire time I was doing that unboxing. And here they go. They're starting up again. And you look at that. Isn't that lovely? Just a little touch, a little something, something. I bet. Thank you. Thanks for the journal, love. Yes, the brushes are available for international buyers um, on ChristyRice.com. Um, some our brushes are available via Amazon in some markets in the UK, but I haven't been able to figure out the, the what and why of who's you know who's able to get it and who's not. It's been very um, unpredictable, so I can't give you definitive information on that. Your best bet would be to go ahead and pick it up on ChristyRice.com. But of course, there is the, the question of shipping, so I get it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead in and finish this background here that I started. Remember friends, these will be available for purchase on christyrice.com today, usually around dinner time. And then I'm gonna be adding some of the original artwork as well, as I mentioned, really excited about that. It's a great way to support a small business. I have a team uh, between my two, you know, my two brands, paint crush here on YouTube and my wedding brand momental designs. Um, we employ, um, permanently we employ, uh, seven individuals and then depending on the time of year, it's more. So you are every purchase. Literally we do a happy dance. Like I'm not kidding. I said that I think on the weekend during one of the lives and I was like, you think I'm kidding? Somebody said they had purchased like a, a blank. We have like blankets and different things on, on ChrissyRice.com. And she was live and said she had purchased a blanket. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And then I explained my enthusiasm. And so, yeah, really makes a difference. Anywho, going in here, I've got green going on. Lots of gesso in here to kind of make this very opaque intense kind of velvety background. I am going off the edges. There we go. Yep, my dogs just don't want to shut up today. <laughs> Sorry friends, sometimes as I'm painting I find it so difficult to speak at the same time. And right now would be one of those moments for whatever reason. Um, the ornaments are painted to the edge and you will also have a signature on the back. You may also have some paint marks on the back too, because that's the joy of, um, of, of hand painted items. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you pre-order the brushes? There is not, they're being, they're going to be sold on Amazon. There is not a pre-order option. Um, but that would be lovely when I know it's like crazy. You can order pre-order books, but it's like a whole different books or a whole different ball game on Amazon, but make sure you're on our email list and um, you'll be the first to know when they are available. Um, I'm hoping in January is when we'll be able to launch them. So hoping, hoping, hoping. I'm continuing in with more layers just to build up the intensity and kind of that velvety painterly finish in here. And then I'm going to go in here and boom, get some contrast going in here. All right, that's nice. All right, a little bit in here. Gosh, I love my daggers. I've been painting with them for years and I still, I'm so happy painting with daggers. I think it's amazing how well you speak while painting. It's tougher than it looks. It is so hard. It is so hard. So thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going back in over here where I began. 
and adding in some textury layers, kind of just using the tip of my brush, little skosh of gesso, little bit, little bit, little bit, Christy Rice. And blendy blend that in. All right, nice, nice, nice. I love this kind of tone on tone feel. It's really pretty. And then I'm just gonna work around trying to smooth things out just a little. Got a little bit of just the color and a little bit of the gesso on my brush as I do this. And I added just a little bit more gesso, but very little to kind of work that around. Working that in, it's kind of re-wetting some of the areas slightly and just allowing me to blend things really beautifully. You see what I almost did? I almost contaminated my palette. There we go. Lovely, lovely. All right, welcome, welcome. You are in for an artful treat, Catherine. Um, a stitched version. Um, not as of right now, I don't have a plan for a stitched version. Um, I'm curious, like, what's the preference? I would love to know, just as someone who designs, uh, I always like the ring bound, but I'd love to know what the preference is. So let me, let me, let me know. I am adding in some darker areas here around the leaves and then blending them out. It's basically just adding layer upon layer upon layer. And this is where things are very much mixed media. The watercolor textures are really the only spot now remaining that feel watercolory. Everything else is very opaque and thicker and more contrasting. Um, and again, why I love mixed media. I am, a, I am a sucker for contrast, light and dark, textured and smooth, shimmer and not. And so I think that's why I always come back to mixed media because it's a place where you can just really push those contrasts in your art so easily. I mean, you can get tons of contrast with just watercolor it doesn't feel as effortless as when you bring in acrylic and watercolor in the same space. So just love it. Love it. Um, I feel like we need some contrast right up in here to find this shape a little more. Yeah, I like that. And then right here as well. What do I want to do here? Yeah, there we go. See, talk yourself through these areas. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. So fun. Oh, easier with the stitched when you're left-handed. Okay. Oh, that makes so much sense. Like I'm an idiot. My father's left-handed. I should know these things. Oh my goodness. How does one buy watercolors in large containers for painting very large canvas? Hmm. Hmm. Um, I believe St. Louis Art Supply has a brand that has very large pans, watercolor pans. Um, I don't know the name of the brand, but check out St. Louis Art Supply and um, see what you find there. But I believe I remember seeing it on there. I don't know how big the pans were, but I remember reading about it because I love that site. It's like one of my favorite supply sites. And I was like, oh, wow, big oversized watercolor pans. That's interesting. So check that out. And um, that should be helpful for sure. My assumption is that you would need bigger, um, you, you need a, a way to get a bigger brush into a palette. Is that, is that correct? Or you're also looking for just large quantities. Um, cause typically when you're painting larger, your brushes scale up as well. So it can be difficult to get a, a, a really large brush into these smaller pans. That's why I ask. 
Oh, a top spiral. <gasps> That's a really good idea. Yes, it would cost a kidney to buy small tubes. Um, yeah, but also, like, what kind of finish are you looking to get with your larger painting? Because, you know, I guess it would just depend, like, on how large, how thickly you're applying your paint, you know, the, the cost of it all. So I, I have a lot of questions, apparently. Because, you know, watercolor, watercolor has a long life, you know, a little bit goes a long way, I guess, is where I'm, I'm getting to with my, my, um, my questioning and my thoughts here. So it may not be as cost prohibitive of, as you're thinking, but I don't know the style that you're working in. So I'm just continuing to go in and edit and refine using the background, the negative space as I go. And then I'm going to let this dry because I'm going to go back in with some white linear detail. And I want, I want to add a little bit of contrast in here. So I'm going to go in with some dots. Love that. I'm not going to be painting a background on this one. And I'm going to move off of these soon and, and go to um, a painting and talk about finishing your paintings. And then I will finish these off camera later, later, later. And they will be available around dinner time Eastern today. All right. the leaves of the dark background. Thank you. It's fun. I'm a sucker for dark backgrounds on these ornaments. Um, I, they just really pop. If you are putting them on a tree, they just, you can see them like you walk in the door and it's like, boom, right there. So anywho, there they are friends. Um, you know what? I'll do a little bit of ribbon dyeing because I didn't do that the last two times I painted ornaments. Um, this ribbon dyeing, let me tell you what, this is great even for just any kind of project where you want a fun ribbon detail. Um, and this is how I do it. So your ornaments come with hand watercolored ribbon to kind of coordinate with the piece. I will go in and just hold it in my hand like this. You can of course lay it out. I do that sometimes too, but I get the whole thing damp and I hold it all scrunched up like this and I start dabbing in color. Like I know I'm insane. But it works, dabbing in color, and it creates such cool texture when you have it all curled up this way. And then I'll release it and see what it's looking like. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? And then I'll set her off to the side and let her dry. And then my hand looks like it does, but, you know, it's okay. We're artists here. Occupational hazard. I'm just literally hanging her on my, my tripod here but wear gloves, just, just wear gloves, <laughs> wear gloves. Hi, Pam. <laughs> Stitch books. If you have uh, plenty of desk space, gotcha. Gotcha. So helpful to hear this feedback. Love it. I love the idea of a top ring though. That's incredible. All right, let's talk about finishing paintings. There are some things that I think about when I'm finishing a painting, friends. And mm, which one do I want to finish? I've got these eucalyptus. Mm, 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 mm. I'm going to do this one. So this is originally on Love the Ribbon. Would you do a peach ribbon, please? Sure, I'll do a peach ribbon. Make sure my hands are clean. Goodness gracious. Love the request. Love the request. This is just a silk ribbon. I think we get this on Amazon. I think. I could be wrong, though. Don't listen to me on these kind of supplies. <laughs> and clean water, especially for the peachy, peachy colors. Clean brush. Get her wet. And then, now I have some paint on my hands. I did wipe it off, but, you know, we'll see what, what happens.
peach is harder because it's so soft. But we get it, we get it, we get it. All right, let's see. Oh, yeah. Isn't that pretty? So I got, I've got some pinks in there, but she's peach. She is peach. I find watercoloring ribbon to be incredibly peaceful, right? I love these tutorials. Kimberly says, I'm not at all a great painter, but you make it fun. I'm finding that I don't care about perfection. I'm having fun. Woo! That's what we're all about here. There she is. So pretty. So pretty. All right. Okay, friends. I'm going to work on this one. And here's a couple of things I think about when I'm finishing a painting. Okay. Oh my gosh. What did I just roll over? I rolled over something in my studio. Anywho, I think about composition. I think about color theory and I think about the trajectory of the painting. Okay. There we go. Kelly, it's a chinois silk. Thank you. That's why Kelly's awesome. One of the 4 million reasons why Kelly is awesome. Um, so composition with this particular piece, just to, just to give you an idea, and I promise you're going to have to look at my face for much longer. We're going to full screen the painting table again. <laughs> so right now the painting is very warm. I talked about this one a little bit in the last slide, and I'm going to have that linked below if you want to check it out. Um, very warm, very like red warm, pink warm, right? There is a little bit of contrast we got with some of these blue leaves, but it needs it needs some balance, right? And it also is floating on the page like so much of my work does. So my thought to composition, so that was my color theory thought. It needs some balance to the warmth. It needs some coolness, right? So then my thoughts on composition are, you know, it's floating. I need to ground it to the page. Um, it breaks a compositional rule. This flower is almost in the center, even though it's a little more towards the top. So I want to kind of balance that maybe with another like medium sized flower or a hint of it somewhere, which is going to be tricky because there's really no space to do that. So I kind of created myself a little situation with this piece. Um, so that's going to be a big edit. So a composition, it's floating, and I got to fix the broken rule. Color theory, it's very warm, overwhelmingly warm, and I feel that it needs some balance with a cool color. Um, it's floating on the page, meaning that nothing is going off the page like full bleed. Let me go back to full screen here, right? Nothing's going off the page to ground it. It's just floating, right? Literally, nothing's touching an edge. Yeah. So I want to correct that. So I'm just going to paint friends and I'm going to talk you through, um, what I'm doing and why I found this, uh, the feedback the last time I did this was super great. Um, and folks just felt like it was super helpful. And so I'm glad of that. Um, all right. So I want to put some visual weight right in this area here. Um, I almost feel like it could be interesting I, I hope I'm right. I could be dead wrong, but you know, we take these risks as artists to almost make it feel like it's kind of shooting out from the bottom of the page a little bit. And to do that, I want to bring in some bigger leaves. I'm using my quart, uh, three quarter inch flat wash brush and making sure there's some coolness with the blue and, and just creating some weight down here, right? Some weight, visual weight, that is. Okay, um, I talked about this before. When you are finishing a painting, it's a, it's a nerve wracking time. You may have a painting that you really love. The fact that you're even wanting it to be quote unquote finished means you probably do love it. 
and you don't want to mess it up, right? You don't want to mess it up. So it can be a very nerve wracking time in a painting's life cycle. So my suggestion to kind of um, combat that is to work slowly in terms of make, make a stroke, take a beat, take a look, evaluate. Don't get, this is probably not the time to be in the flow. And maybe that's a little controversial in saying this, but this is the time to be very present and aware of what, what you're building, so to speak. And so make a stroke, back away, evaluate, and repeat. Give yourself a chance to correct. Typically, as you're finishing a painting, this isn't the time to make huge changes, right? I mean, if you're going to make a huge change and you really feel like the direction of the painting really went in a place you weren't wanting it to go, you know, maybe start a new painting. Like work with what you have on this one and then start a new one to address some of the, you know, to do some of the things you wish you had done with this one. But it's usually not a great time to just complete, completely reinvent the wheel. Now, granted, there's always an if, but then statement to what I just said, you know? There's always the go, go bold moments where you can really change something entirely, right? Right. So, you know, my advice to be taken with a grain of creative salt. I am just adding a little bit of visual weight up in this spray of pink, but not a ton, just, just a few hints of that darker green. And that's enough, I think, or at least it's enough for now. It feels different already, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I was thinking about making it square, but I wanted to challenge myself a little bit more in not going that way. Um, cause that's often what I would do is just slice it, slice and dice. But I wanted, I don't know, for, for learning sake, <laughs> I wanted to challenge myself. All right. Um, I have an idea. Let's see here. I want to clean my blue, make sure she's really what she's supposed to be in there. Grab some of that, there we go. And make over here, really light. My hope, being, my hope here is that these really light blue areas will kind of cool off um, some of what's going on with the warmth of this painting. That's my hope. Need to cool things down a little bit. Cool things down. Yeah. And I'm gonna go up here and repeat some of that. Almost like there were some of these, it's a little too strong. Some of these little buds that are red are, are distant. They're faded into the distance. So I'm going to repeat some of these shapes back here. My brush is acting strange. There we go. Let's see how that feels. I like that. I like that. All right. I'm going to step back. See how I feel about life. Yes. Hello, Marina from South Africa. Thank you so much. I'm so glad um, you're here with us. What time? What, what? I feel like it, I don't know what time, I don't know what the time difference is. Anyhow, yeah, I like that. I want, I like how these kind of come up like this these little sprays that are around this flower. 
but what, but what, but what do I want to do with them? I don't know. I really like this pink spray. I'm going to do a little bit more of it, I think. See how I feel about it. I feel like a fullness up here, but not a heaviness. Just a fullness would be nice. Could be wrong, though. Wouldn't be the first time. So how do we make a fullness in an area, but without making it heavy? There's a little blue on my brush. It's coming across in my pink. My pink looks a little purpley, but it's okay. So we make fullness without heaviness by what we're adding being a light in color, sheer, all the things. But uh, a distinct shape, a lot of shapes filling an area with the light sheer colors. And I'm actually gonna lighten these up because they were too strong. I am doing a lifting technique, adding a little bit of water and then scooping up the moisture and color at the same time and blotting it on my paper towel. If you wanna know more about these kind of techniques, friends, I do have a mastermind watercolor video. I will link it below when this is over. Six hours. Okay, with the Netherlands, got it. Okay. So it's the evening there. All right, that's nice. I'm not sure how I feel about that addition, but I'm going to sit with it. I'm going to sit with it. All right. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Hmm. I feel like we need some more of this blue. Right here. And maybe coming down a little. That's interesting. Okay. And this is how I go through this. This is how I talk myself through this, friends. This is how my brain, I may not be actually speaking all of these things, right? Um, when I'm painting, if I were by myself, let's say, but this is what I'm saying to myself for sure. Even though it may not be out loud. This is 100% what I'm saying to myself. Adding just a hint of detail stems into these just to get a sense of what that structure would do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm still very unresolved about this thing here very unresolved. So I could go in a couple of directions. I could put some big, big leaves up here to kind of balance and make her look more, instead of making her look like she's a stem, making her look more like she's top down. But I actually don't, I don't think that would work. Um, so let me, let me, let me, Oh, I don't know. And that's okay that I don't know. Oh, my brush is just seeping with blue. And it keeps eking out into everything I do. All right. There we go. Berries, maybe, maybe. I've kind of got some of that going up here, right? White to breathe. I kind of felt like I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about like, like a white center and some linear moments. Yes, I've been thinking about that.
feel like I need to breathe. See, these are tense moments that we put on ourselves when we're painting. Be very tense moments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Still undecided. I like I like those decisions I made, adding some of the pink moments. I'm I'm down with it. I am gonna um go ahead and get a sense for. Her. Obviously, she's not in the correct direction, but I'm doing this for the right angle, and so you can get a better sense of where I'm at and what I'm doing. You can see the whole thing. I'm going to add some white. I'm going to test out the white waters before I dive into doing something with the flower. I'm going to do it with this leaf down here. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. All right. How's everybody doing? Is this helpful? Is this how to finish a painting? Is hearing my strange, you know, stream of consciousness, is that helpful to you to understand the thought process? Or is it confusing? Be honest. I want to know. This is a good learning experience, but the painting is too busy for me. Well, everything I do is busy. Yes. <laughs> I like the white. So it could be helpful. It could, it could be helpful. Yeah, I like those too. Lift some of the color out. Yeah, we could lift some of the color out for sure. I almost feel like some of this color, but it's gonna be hard because the red is, is a staining color. Love to hear your internal thoughts and decision making. Thank you, Jennifer. I enjoy the thought process and chit chat, and I really enjoy someone who enjoys what they're creating. I try. I try to enjoy it, even when it's frustrating the pants out of me. I try to still enjoy it, but I do. I do like what's happening here. Honest to Pete, can I tell you what I'm thinking? I don't know who Pete is, but whenever. Um, I say it all the time. I've picked up my grandmother's colloquialisms. I feel very much like a chop. And I know I didn't want to go there. Oh, Aaron. Aaron says, the absolute confidence in each and every brushstroke always amazes me. Well, I will tell you what. It's not absolute. It's not absolute <laughs> and always, but I appreciate that it feels that way sometimes. Anyway, I'm feeling like a chop might be the way to go. I'm feeling like a chop, especially just chopping the top of that flower actually really helps a lot of things. So you'll have to tune in to see friends. Well, you know what? I can't, I can't do that. That's mean. <laughs> um, that is mean. I want to go on to another painting, but um, I also want to see what the heck is going to happen if I do do, if I do do some of these things I'm saying I'm going to do. And then to do some of this linear stuff really outside the lines, I'm loading up this liner brush with as much paint as she will handle. And I am 
I'm working it out. I love how linear detail like this, if um, applied in a certain way, in a certain, you know, if lines are close to one another repeatedly, it can become shadow, it can become depth. And I, I'm just always um, very enchanted by that. And I have been since I was a young artist. And that detail lines don't always have to just mean that detail. Detail lines can be substantial and, and, and robust and create depth and not just detail, right? just happened right there when you I ran a thick line into part of another thick line and uh you know it became uh some more substance down here at the underside of this petal right let me see this is a great technique to actually just block off before you make a cut which is literally block off an area right? Oh, wow. I think I've been hitting my camera and it's been drifting slowly because we are crooked. Tis live, y'all. Tis live. That's what happens. It's the beauty of a live. You're in the moment. All right. I'm trying to straighten everything out because we are all over the place. I, yeah, I just, I'm still thinking the cut might be the way to go. We need some finer moments. We need some finer moments. So I'm going to go down here with that blue and my liner brush and just have, have a little love fest between the two. Everything, uh, uh, most strokes in this painting are large or medium in relationship to one another. So we need that contrast of um, heaviness, that contrast of scale. Some details in a painting are meant to be seen close up. Some are meant to be seen initially, immediately from far away. Um, this little situation that I'm creating here, which I really enjoy actually. Yes, I've been hitting this. I just felt it move. Um, is definitely one of those situations that's meant to be seen closer up. Like a little surprise you're creating for your viewers. They don't see it at first, but they discover it later. It's like I love movies, I love TV, and like it's like when you watch a series that you love, or you read a book you love, and you've noticed something you hadn't noticed the first time around. We can create those kind of moments for our viewers, right? I'm actually going to go in here with the blue. Someone mentioned berries earlier. I'm going to do some really sketchy berries where I'm, I'm making a circle and then I'm continuing that circle to define like what might be the top of a blueberry. It's a fun little technique or the middle of a blueberry like right there. And these blueberries are huge. They're completely strange, strangely scaled, but that makes them fun. Maybe they're not blueberries. Maybe they're like, I don't know, young persimmons or something. Who cares? You know why? Who cares? Because that's fun. That's pretty. I like what you were doing with the liner brush around the flower. I was feeling like the whole, the white around the flower was too stark. Yes. Um, and, and I was looking for a way to, to resolve that whiteness. Um, but I also wanted to add more detail and refine that main flower as well. So I'm glad you like that. But I've got some really fun. I'm really excited about these details here. Like so excited. I'm loving it, loving it. Can you see that? See what's happening there? Mm. Thank you, Joanna. I'm glad I'm fun. <laughs> Somebody tell my kids and my husband that. I don't know how fun they think I am. <laughs> right? Right? Mm. All right, I'm feeling bold. Holding my brush almost perpendicular, and I am going up, and I'm going to do some of these berry-like situations up here. 
I'm a doing it. I'm a doing it. They're not hitting the same way yet because they're on a white background. But we can resolve that. My hand doesn't have a lot of control in the position that I'm holding the brush in. Thank you, Mia. Um, but I'm actually using that to my advantage and creating tentative, uneven, surprising marks that feel that feel a little out of control, that feel a little um, tentative compared to these heavier strokes and actually gives things a really interesting contrast. Now let's take it up a notch. I'm gonna go down here because I like this element. This element, this very kind of, this very like tentatively drawn with my liner brush, very detail is adding that airiness that I felt I needed. So let's really push it. Let's get into it. I'd like to thank whoever mentioned berries because you put it in my head, even though I almost always am thinking berries because I love berries. This becomes a mixed media piece in terms of the visual elements. I'm almost um, taking opportunities. I'm overlaying and overlapping patterns, right? This is, this is already strayed from realism the moment I touched the first stroke to the paper, right? We, we all recognize that. This was never a realistic painting. You have to decide that in your paintings at some point. Do you decide it in the beginning? Am I going for realism? Probably. Or maybe you're, you're taking a painting in a less realistic direction is a response to an issue that you're having. It's a solution to a problem. And there is nothing wrong with that. That is not a failure. That is actually you responding intelligently to a challenge. Or you start a painting and you don't really know where it's going, what your intentions are. I'm going to go into this leaf with some very fine lines close to one another with the white to lighten up this area, but still maintain contrast. Remember what I said about linear detail becoming more than just detail if the lines are close to one another, repeated a certain number of times in an area, and you can see that happening here. This is lightening up this area, but without removing the contrast. You're very welcome, Madeline. I don't even have a clue what time it is. Um, white lines on the clear blue leaves, maybe. Yeah, I know I'm thinking that too. That's a great idea. Let's go do one. I love when y'all help me finish my paintings. <laughs> it's fun for sure. And I'm telling you friends, this is exactly what I would be doing if I weren't live. This, these are the conversations I'd be having with myself if you weren't here. It's helpful, I think, to get inside another artist's head to understand the process. Because this process is hard. This end process is hard. But when you learn to navigate it in a way that gives yourself, it gives you time, time to make changes, time to shift direction, time to stop doing something before you've done too much of it, <laughs> right? You hear me? You hear me? You with me? You with me? Yeah. You can learn those habits and make this, the, the ending part of a painting, much less stressful with a few simple habits. And those habits, I, I'll repeat them again. Look at three factors, composition, color theory, and edits. When you're starting on the journey of completing a painting, right? Look at those factors and how you're going to attack those factors, right? And maybe not all of them might not necessarily need to be addressed, right? I don't like what I did there, hold on. Um, and that's okay. 
not, you know, you might have your color theory down and you're not going to make any changes, any big changes. You're just going to keep that, that vibe going, right? Keep the vibe you've already established going. But I want you to consider those moments. And then as you paint, I want you to make changes and then evaluate. You're going to be doing a lot of evaluating at the end of a painting's life cycle. A lot of evaluating. All right. A lot of stepping back, proverbial stepping back, or maybe literal. All right. And I'm going to down here carry through that opacity into some of these. To be careful though, because it is going to pick up the color from underneath. So I'm going to dab it in. And I'm taking some of that peach down here. There we go. Nice and thick and juicy, syrupy amount of paint on that brush. Don't use too much friction or you will pick up some of the color underneath, especially if the color is strong. I like where this is going. It's like a pattern on a pattern on a pattern on a pattern. Really fun. Hi, Christy. I would like to see something with the vintage Lyra or Faber-Castell copying pencil sometime. Really like the lives. Okay. I, I'm hearing you loud and clear, and I will make that happen soon. I will. I will. Just blending. I'm just filling some of that white space. Getting rid of some of that white space. A lot more work to do on this piece, friends, but she's coming along. I'm feeling the love. I'm feeling the love. Mm. Friends, this has been such a blast didn't do quite as much as I'd hoped, but that's okay. Friends, remember, I'm going to finish up these ornaments today. They're going to be available on ChristyRice.com. I'm also going to um, be posting some of the first pieces of artwork that are going to be available as part of my once a year annual studio sale. Thank you for joining me so much. I appreciate your presence here, your comments, your suggestions. Uh, I think these experiences are so incredibly valuable. So I thank you. I thank you. And uh, all the information, supplies, links, videos that I mentioned that maybe you should watch later. It's all linked below. Thank you, Team Replay. Thank you for being here. Tomorrow we are celebrating my new book, um, Mixed Media Adventures. If you're Team Replay, maybe the book's been out for a year by now, but we're still going to celebrate. So until next time, I wish you so much, so much. Happy painting.